Hello, my name is Mars, and welcome back to Pyre. I just stepped into the black wagon here to change the music to the Sea of Solace music, which I, you'll remember, I really liked last time. I think it was what was already playing when I started the game, but I just wanted to make double sure that the music I remembered really loving was playing. And it is. Oh, I just love the vibes. Okay, but Tay wants to talk to us. She seems to have something on her mind. Oh, hi, miss. I'm so happy right now. I'm happy because I was so worried about Mr. Hedwin for a while there, you know? He was so kind to me when we first met him. Him and Mr. Dario and Mr. Greentail and you too. But I just really like him. I do too, Tay. He's wonderful. She sighs. She seems happy to be here. Say, do you, um... She trails off for a moment. Do you think he likes me too? Oh no. Tay. Um... <laughs> um... Are you gonna be <laughs> my rival? A, I thought you were younger than that. Um, B, he's mine. Um, if she is wondering how Hedwin feels about her, she should just talk to him. Tay should know Hedwin enjoys her company, but may not share her feelings beyond that. There must be a way to redirect her attention to something less awkward. I'm a fan of conversation. You know. Uh, talk to him. Of course talk to him. You suggest to Tay that if she has certain feelings for Hedwin, that she should let him know. It is a rare privilege to feel loved. That's true. She stares at you for a moment. <laughs> then she begins to laugh. Oh, you're so silly, miss. I didn't mean like him like that. That's so embarrassing. Besides, I think that maybe he's a little old, you know? Yeah, I, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. But... You know, it, it's always nice to tell someone, you know? I'm going to go cheer him up. This is a funny story. Oh, no. <laughs> You're going to embarrass me, Tay. She bounds off, leaving you to ponder what just happened exactly. She gained one hope for the next ride. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah. I thought we were going to have to throw hands for a second there, Tay. Okay. Okay, we got two options. The Ragged Rock. The north current towards Stormwall passes by old carcasses of ships long gone. Ricky spotted wreckage in the area and believes there could be valuables to find. And Tiso seems very eager to see the wagon head in this direction, toward the Froth Sea. The south current towards Stormwall brims with large sea creatures. Alright. I feel like we have plenty of valuables. Look at those waves. God, that's gorgeous. Um, um, I think we have plenty of valuables. Sorry, I was distracted by the beautiful waves. But Tiso is my guy. Tiso is my little guy. So uh, if, if you want to go here, then Tiso will go here. The Imp Tiso has been much more animated every, even than usual. What is it, little one? Tiso seems to think something very delicious is in these waters. He keeps on screeching? I don't think I've ever seen him like this. Wait, what is he? Just then, Tiso dives into the waters and vanishes into the depths. Oh, I hope he can swim. He can, but he appears crestfallen when he finally returns. His claws empty. Oh, poor baby. Tizo is very disappointed that whatever he attempted to catch eluded him. Tay begins to sob uncontrollably. The two revel in each other's misery for a time. Aww. Oh no, <laughs> they both lost one hope. Oh no. Uh 
Uh-oh. We'll see how that affects our roster. Uh-oh. Although Tay had already gained a hope, so she just lost what I had given her. Ugh. You and your companions look upon the Deathless Tempest. The stars demand you sail beyond it, yet the very thought is beyond reason. The storm that arose after the death of the sea titan Unfathom Plurns has never has entirely subsided. Then something in the nearby water stirs, and from it springs something familiar. Hold, good ladies and good sirs! This knight beseeches you to hear him, if you please. What is it now, worm? The rites are ended. We have no further need of you. Oh, but you do. And in turn, this knight has further need of you, good lady. Out with it, then. Let us be joined. Let this knight join you. Please. Can you believe this, Hedwin? Not really, no. <laughs> it was a whole thing in the last time that he was basically being abused by his, his triumphant leader, so uh, I'm not surprised. Nay. Look ye not so surprised. Your valor in the rites did stir this poor knight's soul. Would we be getting the scene if we had lost, I wonder? He swears to you, upon his long-lost honor as a would-be knight errant of the sea dominion, that he shall serve you to the end. What about your other worm friends back there? The Pyrehearts. <laughs> they are base cowards! This knight can no longer abide such spineless characters, having witnessed true glory in our clash upon the Hulk of Oris. Never before have we been trounced so thoroughly. And furthermore, this knight shall aid your passage through the Deathless Tempest. It is not so that you seek is it not so that you seek passage to the north? With this knight's aid you shall achieve your wish. <laughs> Sir Gilman continues to persuade you for quite some time. He seems to know a way across the storm, some sort of long held secret among worms exiled to these waters. Jordariel pulls the rest of you aside after Hedwin gives her a look. Are you most sure that Sandalwood would want this thing along? Mostly sure. Sandalwood wants someone for each mask, and this one seems about as good as we're going to get. Jodariel glowers back at the worm, who tries his best to look presentable. Hedwin is more gracious. He tells Sir Gilman that if he promises to help you cross the Deathless Tempest, then he can come along for now. Oh, hard eyes! This knight is overjoyed, and he hereby swears to see you past the storm. Aw, hard eyes. I hard eyes you too, Sir Gilman. Though so first, this knight requires your consent. Give unto this knight your blessings in the name of the night wings, and thus shall he go forth. Tentatively agree to whatever he is asking so he can get on with it already. It's not clear to you as to what exactly Sir Gilman intends to do for you right now. Um, yes? As you begin to say something in response, Sir Gilman cries out in triumph. He vanishes into the depths. Yet, through this close encounter with him, you cling to some sense of where he is going and what he intends to do. Help see his mission through. He has an aura trail that extends behind him. Aura Slash. We caught a glimpse of that when we were fighting him. Determined to prove himself to you in the Nightwing, Sir Gilman emerges somewhere in the outer reaches of the Sea of Solace and calls out to you. Master Reader, if you can hear this knight then, he implores you now, lend him your guidance. This knight's objective ought to be not far east of here. Today we shall bring peace to the embroiled sea. Know, however, that among this knight's brethren, the actions we are about to take are highly forbidden. But they are highly just. Thus, Sir Gilman sets forth to quell the storm that rages to the north. Alright, is this going to be our tutorial for Sir Gilman? Alright, so we get jump. We got Flash, Slither, oh, we got Borders here, are we supposed to jump? Ah, jump over, okay, I see. 
Hark! Yonder loud lie the foul spawn of the unfathomed plurns, boiling the sea with their wrath. Exiled worms within these waters long have harbored these abominations, using them to bar passage through the downside's channels for any save this night's own kind. Be gone now from here, fiends! This night shall finish with the Underking Auras started. How do I... Okay, so I need to start here. I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. Oh, the bubbles are what I'm trying to banish, not... I thought it was these spikes. Alright, so I make a trail by moving, and then... So I want to start... Either start where I want to go, or get there eventually. Okay. See, I was thinking the glowing spikes were <laughs> what I wanted to banish, not the bubbles. Hold it right there, you traitorous slug. How dare you turn your back on this knight to your superior? Superior by rank, no longer. For we no longer serve the commonwealth, that last this knight checked. Here you hold no sway over this knight. Ah, uh -huh. and what have you done to the spawn? Have you no honor left at all? This knight has done what which require doing. His honor cannot sink much lower anyhow. He figured this would be an ideal time to free himself from servitude to you. Why you? You dare to staunch the tempest for those knight wings? Good sir Deluge. This knight was born to dare. Now come and fight this knight if you so dare as well. Fire hearts, banish him. This is an order. All right, so we're gonna have to banish them. Okay. So yeah, we need to make sure our trail starts in the right place. What now, Sir Deluge? Shall you not face this knight yourself and leave the dirty work unto your charges? Fine, Gilman. You wish to stand against your commander then? Have it your way. Sir Marsh, Lady Seagrass, to me, vanish now this troublemaker. Alright, this is kind of fun, I gotta say. You are master of this night no longer, Sir Deluge. Thus shatter our fraternal bonds. Nice. He's kind of fun to use. I like him. This knight would say it was an honor serving you, Sir Deluge, but that would be a bald-faced lie, and yet another stain upon his blackened reputation. Until we meet again. Wait, you lowly traitor. This knight will have your head. Gilman! Yeah, that's a good point. His fires, his aura fires instantly. And others have to charge up. So he could be good. We could, we could use him for banishing. As the day wears on, there is still no sign of the Worm Knight. Your companions grow restless, but then... Hail! This knight returns with newfound tales to tell and new scars to show for them. Sir Gilman is sopping wet and visibly shaken. He struggles to maintain decorum. He is, in short, the very image of a worm knight. And more importantly, that little tempest ought no longer pose a threat for now. Behold! As if on cue, the deathless tempest begins to simmer and subside. Oh no, the waves are part of the tempest. Oh well, I'll miss them. Would you look at that? He really did it. Of course this knight did it. Now, if it would be alright with you, this knight could really use some Shed-Eye. 
The Worm Knight then collapses in exhaustion. You and Hedwin help him up. A deal's a deal, Sir Gilman. Welcome to the Night Wings. <laughs> oh, he's got little blush marks too. Oh, I love that. Sir Gilman joined the group. He also revealed a path north for you. Bid him welcome. Wonderful. All right. The Deathless Tempest. Which is still a little stormy, even if he banished the worst of it. With Sir Gilman's aid, you managed to breach the Tempest. You are true to your word, Worm. I shall give you that. But now what? We are stranded in this cursed storm. A most excellent question, and from one most fair. Aw. <laughs> Call me that once more, and I shall tie you in a knot. <laughs> ah, and from one most spirited as well, this knight was wise to side with ye. Just, where do we turn from here? Answer the question, now. I ship it. <laughs> Sir Gilman does no such thing, although eventually he does make note of a specific current that should lead you to the lands beyond. If I may, I can corroborate Sir Gilman's account. We are close to making landfall. Then let me be the first to say, let's go. You are on the verge of sailing across the Sea of Solace. Um, say, uh, Tariq. I rookie, what is it? That loot you're always carrying around. You know how to play that thing, don't you? Why, I suppose I do. Good, because I was thinking it's a little gloomy here and we could use a little tune to lighten up the mood. Know what I mean? I then let me see what I can do. Hi, Darren. I'll be quiet so we can listen. At last, your wagon rumbles onto solid, jagged ground, the land called Black Basin. Black glass, searing vapor, and strangling forests mark the forsaken lands that loom across the sea. The northern landmass of the downside, first discovered by the eight scribes. Your fellow exiles unpack the wagon so you can take stock of how best to reach your destination. Hi, Sir Gilman. You approach Sir Gilman, who must have just finished practicing his fencing maneuvers. He regards you with a single eye. Hail, Master Reader! This knight is determined to train harder, having joined the famous Night Wings. He shall ensure that this triumvirate continues to live up to its most feared reputation. This is such an honor, and this knight has a great deal of honor to regain. Having fled the Pyre Hearts, this knight fully expects now to conduct the rites in a most honorable fashion, to the fullest letter of the law described within the books. Some triumvirates this knight has met, and perhaps mentioned by name, the Pyre Hearts, I'm sure he means, they are inclined to bend the rules a bit, sometimes a lot, and to prevail by any means they can. But this is wrong! The exile who refuses to obey the rules, as they were written by the Underking Oris and his seven friends, deserves neither his honor nor his freedom. Thusly does the knight have confidence the master reader shall resist any temptations to conduct the rites in any underhanded fashion. 
Now then, this knight must undergo a thorough cleansing, having trained until the point of foulness. So please excuse him, Master Reader. He slithers off, humming some sort of chivalrous, chivalrous tune. Alright. This is your crest? Official certification of knighthood in the Commonwealth, offsought by Worm Knights. Can we check your stats, Gilman? No. Um, you're very quick. You have good hope. Um, your presence is flimsy. And... Gory kind of stinks. You're very fast, though. Wow. All right. Your hope is worse than Tiso's, even with his um, hurt, his hopelessness from being able to unable to fish. Um, you're fast, though. I'll have to keep that in mind. I wonder how we find out, like, crimes and motives and exile, time exiled. Like, we haven't found that out for anybody yet. Survey the surroundings. There is no clear path up the, up the cliff, so you will need to use what time you have to make one. You find that Hedwin has asked for several volunteers to scout the area and report back. All right, everyone. Don't go too far, and let's be back by dusk. Please use caution. The exiles dwelling in these lands are, well, rather territorial. It's kind of hard to tell with the, like, uh, imaginary language they speak. I'm guessing this isn't the case because Darren Korob didn't really start voice acting until Hades. Um, but he was obviously the singing voice of the, of the minstrel. So I'm, tr I'm wondering, is he the speaking voice as well? Like, I know... He was the singing voice for Orpheus, but not the speaking voice. So I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case here as well, but I wonder. For your part, you remain with the black wagon to keep watch. You see occasional dark shapes soaring across the sky, but none of them draw near enough for you to see in any detail. Eventually, your companions make their way back, and everyone arrives as planned, or earlier. Hi everyone, I'm back! I have come back! Tay returns from the east with little to report, save for word that the glowing molten rock there is very, very hot. This knight yet lives, although he has little else to report. The newest member of the group, Sir Gilman, returns from a northern pass, visibly shaken. He appears to have discovered an intense fear of heights. Aww. Aww. Tizo wonders whether any species of fish lives in the pools or rock nearby. Aww. You still want your fish, but... The little imp Tizo seems disappointed to have left the water behind. He remains with you near the wagon. There is a western pass that seems traversable. If we travel by the light of dawn, the shadows and the crags may well cover our advance against whomever, whomever, may, be, blah, whomever may be watching. Why can't I talk? Begging your pardon, I do not wish to contradict your strategy, madam, though in my experience we shall not remain hidden for long during the climb towards the nest of Trieste. The exiled harp matriarch lived in solitude among these very cliffs. The exiles of the high-wing remnants, you may have no love for them, inherently, but they have no such qualms with me for now. I may be able to negotiate safe passage. <laughs> negotiate? With them? Then Hedwin steps in as the lone minstrel bows and backs away. Sir. Hey, let's not decide on this just yet. We're not going anywhere right now, that much we can agree on. We'll decide how best to go ahead come morning. For now, let's take the rest of the afternoon and get our bearings. <laughs> Jodario glares at the sky as everyone else disperses. Alright, big vocation. Um, mentor, companion, study in private. I mean, I, I personally prefer the study in private aspect this won't like raise stats will it mentoring companions it'll just make them level up faster i mean who would we want to level up faster i guess it depends on who we want to get their masteries faster um oh that's actually really good 
Pyre, he can heal our Pyre? I didn't really see that. Okay, I'm just trying to see... Like, I, I don't really know. Um... I don't know who I want to mentor individually. Um, we, we don't know what masteries he can he can get. Um, I don't know. I, I I'll probably just go for the global upgrades. You excuse yourself from the others to go pour over the Book of Rites and its mysteries. Through greater understanding comes the reader's influence. Increase hope, increase quickness, increase presence. Um, hope seems to fluctuate a lot. That's the thing that <laughs> gets affected by um, events the most often. I think that presence would be valuable to increase. It's innate mystic power. You attune yourself to the strange and mystic properties of the Book of Rites, embracing such as possible that which cannot be explained or truly known. Inspiration comes to you in a flash, whether from the book or from within, you cannot tell. Tenacity. Each rank raises your fellow exile's presence, increasing the size of their aura. Nice. Alright, let's go on. Okay, now we have to decide. Jodariel wants to be strategic and avoid the harps. And the lone minstrel believes he can negotiate with the harps. So who do I want to trust? Um, <laughs> I don't know if I want Jodariel to be mad at me, but it, it does seem to me that the lone minstrel knows these lands quite better than the rest of us, even if we've all been here for a long time. I trust him. I, I don't really go for the, the hawkish, un untrusting way of going about things that that Jody prefers. So I, I trust him to be able to negotiate. And if not, oh well. Show yourselves, you frightened little birds. All day long, winged shadows cross the sun. You are being watched. Jodariel is very unhappy about it, though the lone minstrel now attempts to calm her. Perhaps I could communicate with them. Please believe me, madam, when I say your enmity towards the harps had best be held in check here. A winged race, also known as the high Wing remnants, at war with the commonwealth. They are as coarse as their feathers. They hold themselves superior, says Archjustice and Jobelies. The Roman numeral. I don't want to figure out what numeral that is off the top of my head. I did take Latin, but I'm not good at the numerals. Jodaria looks at him with fury in her eyes, yet he retains his calm demeanor. Soon she grants his request with a silent gesture. Then he calls towards the heavens. Good sisters. We are humble travelers such as you, and beg your leave. We journey by the sea and seek, sa seek safe passage through your lands. We shall not disturb your hunting or your nests. The re request is met with nothing but silence. You search in vain for any indication of acknowledgement. <clears throat> then, without notice, one of them appears. She looks cool. She swoops the minstrel up and out of sight before Jodariel can respond. Oh, damn it. Damnation! Wait here, I shall go find him. For a long, terrible moment, you are alone with your panic. Soon, however, the lone minstrel returns amid the sound of flapping wings. He dusts his cloak and calls out towards them. We thank you for your hospitality, good sisters. We shall be on their, our way. Okay, so they took him to talk. Having seen this, Jodariel returns, sullen. The exiles of the Highwing Remnants are letting you pass for now. It seems they are having some dispute within their ranks and wish no further troubles for the time. 
It is a warning, one that leaves Jodariel fuming. She lost four hope. Okay, we're not using Jody. We're not using Jody next time. Unicorn looking thing. Very cool. At last you arrive at the nest of Triesta, where the next rite is soon to commence. You cannot shake the feeling that unseen eyes watch their wagons ascent and remain watching now. All right, page revealed, the hunt for Myrrh. Let's read that. Okay. My emperor lay there, bleeding and alone, stranded in a bitter land beyond the river. With fleeting consciousness, he understood the folly of his quest and the folly of his rule over his country. Thus did he await the last embrace. It was the imp Ha'ub that nursed him back to health and warned him often of the dangers he would have to face. Many enemies of Myrrh would come in search for him, some under employment by the rope collar, some longing openly for cold, uncomplicated vengeance. I was one of them. I plunged into the river willingly. We needed to be sure that he was dead. All right. I, th I think that Myrrh is going to become one of the scribes. That's my prediction, because Ha'ub is one of the scribes, right? I, I think so. So yeah, I think that's what the story is. Alright, let's see what's at the slug market. Oh, hey guys! What brings you way out here? No, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. All I want is you to get the best deals in the downside. Alright, we have, like, no money. Alright. Thorn Knot. When aura casting raises the bearer's maximum range, that's good. Righteous Flame. After dowsing the adversary's pyre, the bearer's pyre is restored by up to five. Any adversaries banished by the bearer take longer to return. I like Righteous Flame. And I know that we're going to have to start selling the talismans we've gotten. in order to buy new ones. Huh. Honestly? Ugh. I'm not the biggest fan of Rookie's current talisman. But I don't know if I want to sell it. it it's very valuable. But I don't know if I want to sell it because it's it's something we earned and it's only for him. I don't know. This is really good. What else can we sell? And would we be able to buy anything back with what we sold? And here's another thing, another thing to consider, is that really at any given point, we only need three talismans among, among our people. I was thinking like, oh, we'll need to keep buying talismans because eventually we're going to have like how many? Eight? Eight people? I don't know how many people we're going to have eventually, so we need to keep buying talismans. But only three of them will be active at a time, so do we really need that many? I don't know. I really want to buy that. Ugh, I don't need anything right now, I suppose. This would be good to have. Wish you guys would have bought something, maybe. Yeah, me too. I don't know. Well... Uh, I, I'm so... I'm so torn. Um... Grants more hope. I gotta start thinking about who I want to use. I want to try out Sir Gilman. And... I want to keep using Tizo. Maybe Rookie this time? And if I'm gonna use Rookie, I'm gonna want something else. Hmm... 
like maybe this one, the Kerfang. <sighs> kind of want to sell this and buy this instead. Yeah, I think that's my best bet. And then buy some Stardust. Yeah. Maybe that was stupid, I don't know. Um, will this improve the Kerfang? No, it will not. Okay. The Kerfang is at its highest, I think. Alright, um, if we're gonna use Rookie, I'd wanna put Quickness on him, I think, actually. And... That I can use this for. Okay. And... What about this? That would be good on this. Especially if I'm going to keep using Tay. Okay. Must be our lucky day here, or I don't know what, Dad. Although, actually, I'm going to want to put the new one I got on someone I'm using. Um, oh, Sir Gilman. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't have a talisman yet. Let's commence the right. You and your fellow exiles gather on the blasted lands called the Nest of Trieste, expecting the imminent, imminent commencement of the rites. You see no sign of any adversaries, but then you hear a wishing sound above. Oh, you got cool music, lady. This, then, is what passes for the Nightwings now. Such a rabble. Not even dressed for the occasion yet. It seems the scribes have little pride in their tradition. Hold your tongue, little bird. We have not come for talk. No, you have come on behalf of your commonwealth. Mark well my words, you horned filth. When at last we free ourselves, your home shall burn. With that, the harp swoops off as Jodario glowers after her. It is only then that you realize another harp has come. She is quite serious, I assure you. I can help you sort her out. It's in our mutual interest. You know not of my interest. Mm, let's give this another shot. Hi, my, ma my name's Pamitha Thane. She appears to be one of the winged harps of the high wing remnants now bound in exile. The surly one back there, that was my blood sister. No need to judge her harshly, though. We've only met just now, though I must say, something about you reminds me of her. How dare you implicate that I have anything in common with your ilk. Except. Just then, Hedwin shows up to intervene. He whispers something to Jodario. No, Hedwin, you cannot be serious. Jody, I'm asking you to trust me on this one. Am I perhaps interrupting something? Say, by the by, however did you make it all this way across the sea? Didn't see you fly in. Trust is something I am loath to give away, Hedwin. But you have set our course thus far, and I have followed, so do as you must. That Sandalwood had better have an explanation for all this. Jodariel storms off as Hedwin turns to you. What's your take on this one, my friend? Our informant wants someone for each mask. I hadn't expected we'd run to a harp, yet here she is. What are you getting from her? You turn your attention to Pamitha, who has been watching with bemused interest. Ah, a reader, are you? Pleasure to make your acquaintance, darling. Well, here I am. Gaze intently all you like and tell your comrade there the truth of it, why don't you? You sense that she is conflicted about something, though you do not know what. You also sense, however, that her motives, here and now, are earnest. Hedwin wants to know your in initial impression of Pamitha. Pamitha. You are willing to take Pamitha at her word and see in her the potential for a valuable new ally. It may be that her training gives her some resistance to your scrutiny. Having only met her, you cannot sense whether to trust her and defer to Hedwin. Hmm. I'm actually not sure. 
I I don't want to be a space racist like like Joe Dariel is being and assume that oh just because she's a harp and she's her people have fought the Commonwealth that means she's evil but I don't know something about the sultry femme fatale act that's what's giving me pause um uh, hopefully this doesn't hurt me I'm gonna defer to Hedwin because I'm really not sure I don't I don't want to take a hard stance on this. You tell Hedwin that you cannot adequately judge Panitha just yet. While you have certain reservations, you defer to him on what to do. I understand, my friend, and I appreciate your backup on this one. Above all, I need to give Sandalwood the benefit of the doubt, which means doing the same right now for Panitha. We've come this far thanks to a certain faith, and right now it's telling you to take her with us even though Jodariel isn't going to like it. He then turns to Pamitha. I'm Hedwin. We'll accept your offer on two conditions, if you'll hear me out. Conditions? Why, sure. I love a good condition or two. First, after we're finished here tonight, you come along and make sure that your blood sister and her friends don't give us any trouble when we're headed out. Second, you'll have to find a way to get along with Jodariel, whom you met earlier. Brilliant! I had no plans to stick around here anyway. As for your demon friend, no doubt we'll get on famously. Now, I don't suppose you have an extra set of raiments I could use? Because I think the rite is getting started. You look up and see that she is right. Pamitha Thane joined you. She has a score to settle. Alright. I don't know how, you're, how you work, though. They didn't give me a tutorial like they did for Tizo and Zerg Gilman, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Do I want to use her right away? Frida. I thought for sure the stars would have eluded you by now. Yet here you are, somehow, upon the nest of Triesta. And you've swelled the ranks of your triumvirate not merely with another, but with two. One from the Pyre Heart, no less. And one who seeks the favor of the adversaries whom you'll imminently face. They are the essence. Winged terrors, as you soon shall see. Can your longing for freedom match their hatred for the vibrant country that was once your home? From a distance, you observe as Pamitha, now clad in Nightwing's raiments, heads towards your adversaries in the rites. You, what sort of heathen harp would dare take wing against us? Your new companion then loosens the bindings on her mask. Hello there, Tamitha. Tamitha's blood sister stares at her a while before responding. What in the saint's name are you doing here with them? St. Triesta Tithus, fifth of the eight scribes of the Book of Rites, known as the Disciplined, or the Blessed Born. The eldest of the heart matriarchs, she anointed the Book of Rites and gave its words their power. Doubtless come to dig your talons in my back again. No, sister, I've come to have a word with you. Save it. I cannot help but share your poisoned blood, but I shan't ever count you as my sister. You expect me to believe that you came all this way for talk. You waste your time as ever. What's life if not a waste of time, dear sister? Give me a chance, why don't you? What do you even have to lose anymore? Besides, I've come a long way. Silence. You shan't have come here, and the time for talk is long since past. If only you could see yourself, again, consorting with my enemies. Fine, then. Savor their defeat. But I warn you, stay away from me. Hmm. Pamitha says nothing more as her blood sister turns away again. Hmm. Pamitha gets her attention. Oh. Listen to me, reader darling. The rest of you are ill-equipped to navigate this place. Let me conduct this rite on your behalf, and my wings will bring you victory. So Dear later, lady, your words ring true. This knight is flattered that you have not eaten him, as is the tendency among your kind. This knight hereby volunteers his post in the triumvirate for thee. Sir Gilman refuses to participate in the rites this night so that Pamitha can face her sister. Okay. You observe the treacherous terrain. Pamitha should be better suited to the rites here than the rest of you. 
What about Tiso? Tiso can fly as well. Oh, she's gonna do it alone? Everyone's reluctant. And Sir Gilman is chivalrous. Okay. What's your bio, Pamitha? Tackle. Hurdles forward, engulfed in aura, immune to adversaries' auras. Fly. Takes flight, evading adversaries and obstacles. Hold to fly longer. That's W. And dash. Dashes forward, shoving any adversaries aside. If the Commonwealth fears anything at all, it is the harps of the High Wing remnants. She is clearly one of them, many of whom have been exiled as prisoners of war. She seems to have an unusually easygoing attitude towards things, though you sense she is in pain or in a state of turmoil over something. And let's look at the essence. Tamitha can do everything that Pamitha can do, I'm sure. She is a stoic and threatening harp of the High Wing remnants, whose entire life has likely been committed to the destruction of the Commonwealth. Though now in exile of the downside, she remains determined to fulfill her ambitions to overthrow her people's wingless oppressors. She is the apparent blood sister of Pamitha, but if she has any love for her, you cannot sense it at all. And then two more sisters. Okay. Okay, Pamitha. I'll give you a talisman. Your presence is pathetic. You're not that fast. Your hope is fine. Alright, I need a talisman that I can give you then. Um, I could do one of these. I worry about banishment. Um, hmm. Huh. I could give you the moon crest. To make banishment less difficult. Why, I thought you'd never ask there, darling. I accept. If the little bird is going to conduct the rites for us, then I shall not. Alright, so no Jody. Okay. I want Tiso. I still want Tiso because he's our... And she is unwilling. Okay. I want Tiso. Tiso. He promises to do his best against Tamitha and the Essence. Okay. Alright. And how about... How about Hedwin? And I will give Hedwin this. Yeah. Hedwin. I think the extra stamina would be good for us. You can count on me, my friend. Come then, sister. Perhaps when we are finished here, you'll spare a moment of your time. I shan't be tricked by you again, Pamitha. How poetic that we meet here in the downside. I can think of nowhere else where I would rather see you rot for what you did. To our people, and to me. Hmm. Pamitha seems to sense your presence, then catches your attention. Hello there, reader darling. If I'm to be at your mercy in all this, I'd like it very much if you could minimize how often I'm to wallow in the state of banishment. Quickly, let me show you what we sisters of the High Wing Remnants can do. Hold W to, you put to fly. Amidst a feud between two sisters. Okay. That seems entirely unwise. Even for you. Her dash knocks up is away. Alright, we read that. While tackling, Pamitha cannot be banished. Okay. Okay. See, darling, we harps were not so bad. Now I suppose we'd better get to work, hmm? Just don't go underestimating Tamitha over there. I promise you'll do the best you can. To the sky, sisters. Talon formation. There we go. Nice. Okay. She's not so hard to use. Let 
There we go. Headwind. Nice. Chiso was it? Tell me something. You know how to fly? Chiso is rather proud of his ability to flutter, as a matter of fact. Then listen up. My blood sister there, she'll swoop right past you if you're careless. But we harp simply cannot get much altitude down here. So, if she goes for any unfair tricks, just jump for it and catch her in the act. She always hated when I used to do that to her. Press W to block flying adversaries. Haha! -ha! Oh no! We're all dead! Oops. I banished Tiso when no one was on the field. Okay. Eh. Nice. Okay. Pamitha's pretty easy to... Oh no, she fell in the... Aha! Oh no! Oh no! Headwind died. Oops. Okay, we're tied, is what he's saying. Nice. Oh no! I fell. Oh no! They might they might win. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. I got too confident. They might win. Damn you, Pamitha. You are no true Thane. To think you have the gall to call me sister still after everything you wrought upon us. I hate to break it to you, Tamitha, but I don't think my actions, however much they hurt you, had any effect on our familial status. Look, I know I wronged you. That's why I'm here. You don't know my side of the story. Your side of the story? If I wanted to hear more lies and deceptions, I ought to have asked the Commonwealth to stay my sentence for a while. Well, if you have come all this way to face me, Pamitha, then come and do it. You and me. You think that you see Pamitha shake her head. Everyone, stay back. Okay, so it's just Pamitha. Alright, that was close. It would be really interesting to see what happens if we lose. You commonwealth filth. Only through this traitor's help could you have beaten us. You postponed the coming of our liberty. But we are ever patient, and our sisters on the other side shall have their day, with or without my aid. Tamitha, wait, please. You found good company there, Pamitha. May you wither here with them. I hope sincerely we shan't ever meet again. Pamitha stands motionless as her blood sister departs. Tisa was trying to let Pamitha know the others are returning to the wagon. I also really liked that by choosing Tiso to be on the team, I gave him and Pamitha like, a special interaction. That was really nice. I liked that. Sure, I don't see why not. All right. All right. Headwind is leveled up. 
I used to think the scribes were just the stuff of stories. But all of this, this really is their doing, isn't it? Alright, so is that... Okay. Hedwin has to be the one to douse the pyre. If... In order for this talisman to come into effect. Okay. I didn't quite realize it. I thought it was, if anyone has this talisman, then anyone can heal the pyre. But no, it's just, it's just the person with it. Alright, he gets more stamina. While bearing the orb, Hedwin and his allies move with him past the orb more quickly. They may instantly return banished allies. That could um, really mesh well with Tiso. I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know. Do I want to go all in on this? Or do I want to choose one of these? Alright, either way... Hmm. I like this one. While bearing the orb, Hedwin and his allies move with them past the orb more quickly. Alright. Alright, Tizo leveled up. Tizo appears to have a certain depth of knowledge. Tiso just had a flash of inspiration about his role in the rites and as part of the Nightwings. Alright, so... He can move faster. Which would actually uh, synergize quite well with this. So that I can... With my strategy in using that, at least. Because I like to zip to the middle, banish as many people as I can, and sometimes the enemies get get to where I want to be faster than I can. So that would actually synergize well. Um, if banished, he so automatically casts his employed ability. Um, I, I just want to make him faster. Alright, she didn't quite rank up. Alright. Press W to block airborne adversaries. Good to know. After triumphing over the essence in a close contest, you and the others return to your wagon. Consider your next move, and how best to integrate Pamitha into the group. Don't worry, I won't be staying any longer than it takes. I like my fresh air so I can sleep up on the roof. I trust the rites will cause my path and Tamitha's to cross again before long. You're welcome with us for now, Pamitha. Trust is what got us here. Isn't that right, Rookie? But Rookie does not seem to hear the question. He has been rather quiet since first encountering your new guest. <laughs> Tamitha shoots him one of her smiles. He stammers something about having to check the wagon wheels again. Okay, so it's, it's a horny kind of silence. I get it. He runs off. During this discussion, the minstrel pulls you aside. Can get our Reader, I ask a moment of your time outside find our next right? There is somewhere I may ask we go here in Black Basin. By your leave, of course, and provided that the stars allow it. Would you look upon them for us, please? Alright. Lou, the Vernal Star. The Vernal Star burns bright over the densest woods in Black Basin. Pretty tree. The Glade of Lou, directly west. Then it is just as my client indicated. The great sap scholar Lou Sklory in here vanished the Groot Titan, Limless Arizak. This client of yours, our informant, Sandalwood. He entrusted us with this wagon, this quest. Why? What does he want from us? You may ask him yourself. He awaits us, somewhere in Wakingwood, due west. How do we find him? He shall find us. It seems you are soon to finally meet Sandalwood. At dawn, you shall have to cross a single narrow path leading west, where he supposedly awaits. Oh, all right. A lot happened in that one. And it seems like we're going to meet Sandalwood next time, so that's very, very exciting. Um, until then, though, I have been Mars, and I will be back with more Pyre. <laughs>